For those who just joined us, this is the design track. Um, for those of you who stayed, yay. Um, our next speakers are Paul and Antonia from Green Wave Lasers. Obviously, this is obviously super cool. Um, and I don't think physically we can have a demonstration, but we've got as far as we can, close yeah, to that. So, I would say, well, clap, I think. much for coming to um, to hear us talk and talk about that. We've already been introduced. I'm Antonia and I'm from Green Wave Laser. I'm Paul. I'm from Packet Ship and Green Wave Laser. Okay, so um, we're told that you should never work with children and animals, um, but that in this case it doesn't extend to husbands. So this <laughs> our, Green Wave Laser is our creative kind of partnership. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is the tech, you know, kind of technology and creative side and how they can really sort of you know, introduce really fantastic, interesting things and how you can engage people with them. So, simply, you could think about uh, Green Wave Laser as a sort of light uh, creatives. And I say light in kind of broader way, just not just laser, because we are kind of expanding into programming with LEDs and UV and lots of exciting applications for light. So, can I just get a hands up? Who um, has seen a, a laser show before? Okay, Where, was that at a concert, would you say? Hands up if it was at a concert. So probably, you know, about three quarters of you have actually seen lasers in terms of concerts. So you may not have seen a kind of more creative side of using lasers, and that's what really fires us up, that's what we're really excited about. So these are just some examples of things we've got involved in. So we started only eight months ago, so we're a very new sort of business, and um, we're, you know, kind of excited about everything. But... You may have come along, there's a couple of people I recognise in the audience that came along to um, a very windy and wet evening at Hearts. A few people nodding their heads here. Yeah, thank you. That's Robert's thank picture, you for I have to with us if you were there. Um, and uh, we did a sort of sci fi themed soundtrack onto the Fantastic Heartlands building. So we've done sort of, you know, the, the, the themed. Uh, laser shows accompanied by recorded music. And then we kind of broadened out and thought, right, okay, what's other services, outdoor services? We love doing site specific stuff. We like getting you know, involved with you know, some challenges. And a big challenge was actually to uh, project onto a cliff face, which is about 250 metres away, and we had projections up to about 20 metres high. And we did that for the RNLI, a big fundraising event there. And then we thought, well, actually, what's about sort of getting involved with different types of media? And I'm sure you saw probably represent some of those medias here today. And one of them, what we're quite excited about working with, was film. How do we kind of, you know, uh, engage with, with film? And we created the first kind of laser-enhanced cinema in Falmouth, um, partnering with the Arts Centre, the Poly there. Um, and we did uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I know there's a few people in this room that probably never heard about that movie, but it's a very famous movie by Spielberg, 1970s, and we're going to be doing another one uh, in October, Harry Potter. So we're really going to get involved in working with film. And most recently, uh, we're looking at how we can extend our reach into interactive, using the laser and a laser installation. I'm not giving too much away here, um, so we could be talking about a little bit about it later at the Apollo 50 festival. So we're looking at how we can use uh, lasers and allow the public to kind of interact and be at the centre of those laser displays. Again, we're working with partners with museums as well. So some really exciting kind of developments ahead, even with, in a very short period of time. So what I like to think, though, is that we're kind of broader than just the kind of light artists um, kind of tagline and that we're all of these things and I'm sure that you will probably identify yourselves with some of these things as well and probably all of them. So you know we are innovators, creators. I also come from an education background. That's really important to me in how to get people involved and to educate developers, very importantly collaborate and we're looking to see how we can collaborate. And as I said we've already started that journey already. So um, perhaps what you could Add to that list is that we are also, you know, pioneers and, and guinea pigs because, you know, we are a collaboration. We are uh, putting together innovation and creativity and coding and collaboration. A collaboration between Packet Ship, which is the software development, and also the kind of creative output of Green Red Laser. So, you know, pioneers and guinea pigs. Now, when we were putting together this uh, particular presentation. Uh, this quote came to mind. 
because this is so new. What we're doing is so new, and it was still being kind of developed. The software that we're going to demo was still being developed and still is. It's on a kind of development, you know, kind of development timeline, and we're right at the sort of kind of beginnings of it, the exciting side. Which, of course, we really would love you to get involved in at some stage because we want to make it user for all. It's not just about using it for lasers in particular. It's about how it can be applied to a whole myriad of different types of media sources. And that's what's really exciting about that. So partly this is relating to the fact that it's so new in terms of stage of development. And partly because it's so exciting that it could be used for lots of different kind of media applications. So I'd love to hear... You know, perhaps after this talk, after this talk, what you think it could be used for, how you would use it, and, and sort of feed into that process. Okay, so what was the big idea there? Well, most big ideas come from a frustration, and I'm sure you've had those moments in your life where you've said, "If only it could do this," or "If only it was able to do that." So, you know, from my point of view, I wanted to kind of, you know, be on the sort of creative side of lasers. And often it uses sort of standard software, you know, Pangling or Student or Studio Editor. It's quite limiting. And, um, and so I kind of had a conversation with my husband and it kind of went like this. I said, Paul, well, I really want to get um, the public involved with what we do. You know, it's a bit passive, you know, they're seeing these wonderful displays, but I'd really like to be them, them at the centre of what we do, and actually kind of creating their own displays. Can the software do that? Mm, no, not really. Okay. <laughs> so, what about if, um, you know, I wanted to kind of use uh, proximity sensors and have people being able to kind of, you know, react with the laser, you know, kind of manipulate the laser by, you know, using sensors, motion sensors. Can the, can the laser kind of, you know, interact with that? No, software's too closed. Okay. All right. Uh, so, we always do soundtracks and we put that recorded soundtracks to what we do. But what about if you could kind of create your own music? You could kind of use, um, you know, different kinds of sounds which then would manipulate them, the lasers in different and interesting ways. Now, could it, can it do that? No, it just does lasers. <laughs> okay. So, but you're a software engineer mm -hmm. and you've been doing this for about 30 years. And you're married to me. <laughs> so can you build it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So I'm kind of like Ben as well. So this was the first iteration of, of what I came up with. And I know we're going to have a bit of a divide in the room here because there's a few people going, right, okay, what code are you using? And uh, what does that actually say? And um, you're kind of trying to figure it out. Can I get a hands up? Who actually knows what this code is? Oh, I'm so relieved. Most of you are on my side then. So you do. Oh, there's a couple of person at the back there. So um, the other, most of the people in the audience will be saying, well, that looks a bit complicated. Now, how would I write that? And what does that actually do? This is actually part of the coding that we used for the laser enhanced film. That we used. But of course, as a creative, that's very scary. The idea of having to write code to do what you do and not really being able to understand that process. So I sort of said, well, you know, that's great, but I want to be able to do it. I want to be part of it. I want to be able to create myself. Can you go back to the drawing board and create something for me? So I'm going to hand over for. So the next stage is actually to kind of, at the very early stages, to come up with something that would be visual and suitable for me to be able to <coughs> manipulate. So the second Thank you. process so is this. This is obviously a twinkly star field. Obviously. You can't, you can't see that. <laughs> so it's like the twinkly stars on the ceiling. Um, so. Now you get the science bit. So this is what we have at the moment. Um, what we built originally was this bottom bit. It's a real-time engine. It's all <coughs> plus plus thing. It generates the laser graphics. Essentially, it's got interfaces that goes out to the lasers. There are various protocols to do that. Um, and it has a MIDI interface so that we can play it live. In fact, the, the whole Close Encounters thing was played live with a, the with a MIDI keyboard. Um, and we've also got DMX output so we can do lighting control and things like that as well. So what you saw originally, that bit of XML there, was what was originally used as the configuration interface for all this. And it's what created those, that show that we would, then, we would then present. So the new bit is that's still there. And what we've, this is really new. I mean, literally, I did Git pull last night to get the latest version, <laughs> so it's that new. Um, is the diagram editor. It's a web app. It's all uh, written in TypeScript. I'm a huge convert to TypeScript, by the way, for any JS developers out there, it's amazing. Uh, and React. So it will run on any of these things. So at the moment, the backend only runs on Linux. Eventually, we'll have it on other platforms. 
but the front end can be used on absolutely anything, and it's a drag and drop interface. So conventionally, these kind of systems, they're, they're a Windows program, right? They run on Windows, they've got a UI, it's a native UI. This is the kind of Web 2.0 version of that. So that's where we are now, and this is where we're going. So basically, it's the same thing, but it gets wider. So we're adding LED control for, for um, addressable LED, so sort of LED strings, LED curtains, that kind of thing. We're adding video output, so it's the, we're in the sort of VJ, VJ stuff there. Um, using 3G, OpenGL, to create video outputs, but still using the same data flow idea. So the core idea here is you have a data flow machine. It's basically lots of pluggable components. So you, have, you can sort of create a circuit diagram, which I'll show you in a moment. And if, if, are there any musicians in the room? Are there any synthesizer musicians in the room? Yeah, so you know about modular synthesis and LFOs and VCOs and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is essentially taking that model... And we do do all that within the audio space, but we're also doing the same, using that same model um, in, the, in all these other spaces. And then uh, the next stage for the web app is we've got the diagram editor, which allows you to set up the sort of interactive systems or self-playing systems. Um, but obviously, any kind of AV system needs a timeline editor. So and that's, that's actually really what we're developing right now is the timeline editor, which you'd be familiar from... <coughs> Uh, you know, Audacity or uh, uh, any kind of video editor. Um, and then the, the next stage, and this is probably next year, is we're going to take this core, and we still have, for the real-time stuff, it needs some really heavy lifting. It'll still be there, running uh, Linux, Windows, Mac OS. It's all, it's, it's, you know, it's a service in the Windows world. It doesn't have any UI. All the UI is web-based. But we're going to take that core and put it into JavaScript. And we can then do stuff which is pure client-side. So we can do not professional level audio, but we can do stuff with web audio. We can do um, we can start we can generate uh, vector graphics. We can use WebGL to generate all that kind of stuff. So we can start to have this as an absolutely pure cloud service, which is all running purely in the browser, and that opens up other markets like data analysis, um, where you're taking data feeds and you're manipulating in different ways and you're generating different outputs. It's still the same concept of a data flow machine. Pluggable modules, data flowing through them. Simulation is the same idea. So you've got different modules that connect and you have a feedback loop and you can do all sorts of things like environmental and ecological simulations with that. So there's a whole raft of markets that we could address with this. Um, the first markets we're in are audio and laser because obviously, you know, anybody who's read that crossing the chasm knows you've got to take a bridgehead first. So we're kind of trying to keep it uh, sort of limited to start with but with a, with a big ambition. So I'm now going to try and live demo. So this is the cross the fingers moment. So this run, the speaker doesn't work, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're having to run the audio through the actual laptop speaker. Yeah. I'm going to start with vector graphics, so you can see. <coughs> right. So unfortunately, um, well, I, I have got a laser show. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, what I'm doing there is pretty much exactly what a lot of laser shows do. When you've got a laser and you've got a couple of scanners that are doing an XY scan. And all, what we call abstracts are literally that. They're just, they're doing it faster than that, so that I can't move my hand quick enough. But, um, but, but, or you can do text and images and all sorts of other things. But the fundamentals of laser shows, and especially ones that are done in the air rather than projection, are basically just scanning it backwards and forwards around in circles. So I'm going to show that a little bit. What I've got in this box here is a simulation of that. Um, this is actually a, a canvas within the browser which has been fed from a web socket instead of feeding the laser. So... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this, this bit of stuff we've got here already. You can see my mouse pointer. Yes, you can. Good. Um, the stuff is it's just sort of set up, really. It allows me to connect it. So I'm going to create the sort of fundamental thing that you find in every single laser show. It's the Lichajou figure. And it's the basis of almost every abstract pattern that you'd ever see in a laser show and lots of other vector graphics as well. So I'm going to connect that up here. And I'm going to put, let's have a sine wave on the x-axis. So it's scanning a line. And most, if you've ever been to a concert with, edit, with uh, lasers, that's pretty much what they're doing. Because what they do is they scan a line and they put lots of smoke out and it looks really pretty. But let's make it a bit more interesting. So let's, uh, let's put a, a sine wave on the y-axis as well. Now oh, that's interesting. Who thought it was going to make a circle? Thank you. Um, 
it's not a circle because they're both going at the same time. So what we need to do is we need to change the phase. So we've got a circle. Okay. Now that's both these uh, oscillators are running at the same frequency. If I if I increase the this one, let's increase that one. Then we get the classic Lissajous figure, with wiggly lines like that. Okay. <coughs> you can imagine that if you were doing this on a tablet, everything will be touched. So although Paul's obviously using the mouse, you know, the idea is that you'll be able to manipulate all this, and sort of, you know, tangibly be able to change things and just tweak things as you wanted, and obviously do it in real time as well. So I'm now going to do um, the next level, which is, if I can find the menu, without, not, which isn't hidden by that thing. Um, so we, let's have two oscillators. So I'm going to add them together. So you can see what I'm doing, I'm literally just connecting things around. And if anybody's used uh, audio synthesis software like Audulous or whatever, you might be familiar with this kind of mode of working. But it's also, you know, um, it's, it's a very sort of, uh, oh, let's that, thank you. Um, it's a very naturalistic way of doing it. So what I'm going to do now, I've got two, I've got two oscillators, I'm adding them together. And let's change the frequency of this, and we end up with some interesting patterns. Um, I'm going to just reduce the size of these oscillators a little bit. I'm having to, I, one thing I forgot to bring with me is a mouse. Obviously doing this with the trackpad is an idea. Um, so it's, you can make these patterns change. I can do all sorts of things. I can change the frequency or whatever, and interesting things happen. But obviously, I don't want to be sitting here turning the knobs manually all the time. So I can, what I can do is I can create... Uh, what are call? Let's create what's called a low-frequency oscillator. Um, and this, the synthesizer buffs in, among you will recognize this. And I'm going to connect that to, let's, where are we? Let's create that to the X frequency of that one. And let's, I'm a bit crossed for space here. This projector is smaller than my normal screen. Um, and we're going to make it have a period of, let's make it one of eight seconds, four seconds. And we can see we sort of, we're starting to get some interesting patterns. And you can just keep developing and adding and adding and adding and more and more like that. So that's all very well. We've got this vector, we've got this laser display going on. What if we want to do some audio? Well, let's bring this over here. So, if we want some audio, this is the bit that we couldn't get to work earlier because I can't get audio output on, but I'm going to unplug that. Let's create a, an audio, a VCO, which is a voltage control oscillator, fundamental of any old-fashioned analog synthesizer. And I'm just going to plug that in there, and let's have a sine wave. And the important thing is that you'd be able to relabel any of these because if you, like me, didn't understand what the VCO was or the LFO was, you can actually label to something to something that actually relates to you. Okay, it's sounding pretty scratchy through my speaker, but you get the idea. And then, well, okay, that's a bit boring sound. So what if we took this LFO here, which is driving the graphics, but also connect it up to the Right. Pulse width with that, and you start to get an audio thing that's changing at the same time. Now, okay, I've got this simple oscillator, but that could be somebody moving a handle or pulling a rope or, or moving around it. You could have it from proximity centres and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, that's looking at the time, that's probably all I'm going to do for the demo. Um, so, we want to get you to do a bit of playing. So I'm going to ask some Philip, a willing volunteer. Well, let me just, I'm going to just switch to this. Ah. Now, yes. who knows who this is? So in terms of audio, being able to use it for audio, and talking about it, it's kind of a bit of a giveaway in terms of synthesis and everything. Anybody recognise who this is? I can absolutely guarantee you can be able to see, heard, in one of his, uh, his compositions as part of a film that you've watched. Is that No. Hans Zimmer. Yeah, Thank well done. Much. Well done, yeah. Hans Zimmer. And obviously back in the day, you know, he was a bit of a synth fan as well, and he had a huge bank of these synthesizers. In fact, he still uses those and has his entourage that takes them around on, on tour with him. But obviously using the software that was just kind of demoed at a kind of you know, real, real you know, introductory level, 
is that you can actually create some of those really unique sort of spaces like sounds if, that if anybody that, who doesn't um, know about analog synthesizer each one of these stripes is one of those modules that I've just shown you on the screen and the wires are literally the wires that I was connecting so you could imagine I mean well it's probably got a hundred modules there it's not in impossible you could do a hundred modules <laughs> on my laptop so can I have someone to who would like to come up and have a bit of a play? Because what we've done is we've, um, we're actually going to demonstrate something that we're going to use. I mentioned the Apollo 50. So we're going to have a uh, sort of sound and light wave installation there. And we pre-programmed a MIDI board with some of the some sound clips and Whoops. some ways of sort of you know manipulating those waveforms. Does so anyone like to come up and have a bit of a play? And let's just choose someone. This lady here. Oh, thank you very much. <coughs> Yeah, that was it. I think I'm having demo syndrome now. Worst case scenario, I'll be terrible. So this is what we've uh, one of just one of the MIDI boards that we've programmed up. I'm going to have a whole load of MIDI boards, keyboards, microphone. So all of that input, that sound input, can actually manipulate uh, the waveforms that you just started to see. Okay, we have a. I have an audio problem. Again. I'm going to try for restarting that. No. <coughs> okay, well, you can see what we're playing, <laughs> you can't hear it, um, which is rather a shame. Um. I think what we'd like to do is have it kind of, I don't know if it's possible to have it running or something over the break or lunchtime, and if people wanted to have a bit of a play, so then we can actually switch off the mics, because the problem is we're mic'd up, and it's affecting the audio on here, so we'd be unmiked, and then we'll actually be able to play the audio much more easily, so I don't yeah. know if that's possible at all. So I think maybe... Uh, after the next um, yeah. speaker, yeah. just before lunch, we hang around for 10 no minutes. Yeah. Maybe. That would be fantastic. So if anybody's actually right. interested yeah. in the play Sorry, um, on the MIDI kit, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, we'd like to encourage you to really get... So, we'd be able to actually connect it much more easily without having to be mic'd as well. So, following the... You know, imagine being able to play with it and the fact that you can actually create... Um, you know, interact with it in terms of sound, change things, being able to put sound clips in and be able to affect the light forms. Thank you. So what would be the next steps then? Well, we want you to be the guinea pigs as well and join us in terms of thinking about ways that you could use it creatively, you know, depending on what your interests are, uh, what mediums that you might work with. And... You know, we're looking for collaborative partners. As we mentioned at the start, we're in the very early stages of development, and we will be beta testing it. So As if you, you are tell. interested <laughs> in sort of getting involved, refining it, thinking about how you might use it so we can feed that into the software development and really make it useful to you, because that is the exciting bit. That really is for us is that it doesn't have to be just limited to light and laser in terms of what we're using. We're excited about how you might use it as well. Um, and we're also excited about how you might collaborate with us to use it. So do talk to us. Do come along. If we can set it up as a demo, do come along and have a chat with us about it. Um, you know, talk about. We'd love to hear about what you're doing and, and, and how it might fit in with uh, what we're doing. So either follow us on Twitter or Facebook or drop us an email. Uh, it would be great to get you know, your input on it as well. So thank you very much for um, you know for listening to us and you know. Again, please do ask us any questions after, you know, in the break, uh, and I'll set lunch. Thank you. Brilliant.